It is just announced that it's no longer gonna be sending participants to debates that are organized by the Commission on Presidential Debates, that's a CPD. The institution now that's been around since 1988 in terms of organizing the debates and yet all of a sudden, Republicans are jumping ship now. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Let's go ahead and explore what is possibly really going on. This is what the RNC said yesterday when they made the announcement. Debates are an important part of the democratic process and the RNC is committed to free and fair debates. The commission on presidential debates is biased and refused to enact simple and common sense reforms to help ensure fair debates, including hosting debates before voting begins and selecting moderators who have never worked for candidates on the debate stage. Today, the RNC voted to withdraw from the biased CPD and we are going to find newer, better debate platforms to ensure that future nominees are not forced to go through the biased CPD in order to make their case to the American people. The RNC will require Republican presidential candidates to sign a pledge that they will appear only at party sanctioned primary and general election debates and RNC official confirmed. So I guess, you know, hey, so much for the party of personal choice. Uh, But it really just sounds like somebody doesn't want to be challenged and doesn't want to have to show on a live stage that they're not fit to be in office. Uh, But that's just my thought. Was. Hmm, where have I heard this line of thinking from the GOP before? I'm actually old enough to remember repeal and replace, Adrian. <laughs> it was repeal and replace Obamacare. Repeal, replace, repeal, replace. You could never figure out what they were gonna what they were actually repealing, what part of it they wanted to replace. Um, were you gonna bring premiums down or you know, bring a light? What were you making better about the coverage? They never had any ideas. They took over the White House, control the Senate, control the House. They did nothing the entire two years that they had um, the White House under Donald Trump. Um, this reminds me of that. This is repeal and replace all over again. Yeah, and I mean, while I do agree on paper with the two that you cited there, the two demands that they have about it does make sense that debate moderators should not have worked for any of the candidates on the stage. That makes sense. I do agree that maybe debates should take place before voting begins. Those on the surface seem like decent ideas, but as many a Republican plan, a decent idea is just there on the surface to cover the nefarious purposes behind it. Because the real reasons are they're mad that they muted Donald Trump's mic during the debate. And they're mad that they were trying to (laughs) make it a fair exchange of ideas on the public stage. To, to strong arm all of their candidates and tell them that they cannot sign a pledge, or that they cannot do a debate unless they sign a pledge to only do RNC sanctioned debates. It just shows yet again how they're becoming the party of obstruction. I'm not becoming, they've been for a very long time because the Commission on Presidential Debates is RNC sanctioned. It's the one organization that is sanctioned by both the DNC and the RNC. And so just work harder to get common sense rules changed. If it was just the common sense rules that they wanted changed, the DNC would get on board with that as well. And you could continue having debates. This is to me just another example of like when they just, when the when the Senate confirmed Justice Jackson and the Republicans literally walked out like petulant school children. They're just walking out of the concept of fair, Debates agreed upon on both sides. They're becoming more and more immature by the minute. And pretty soon, I think by talking about them, we should get babysitting rates. I'd like $19 an hour. Yeah, babysitting rates. I think that would be great. But the reality is that they don't cover childcare. Like Republicans are so. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. They are just way too much and there is way too much going on, especially when it comes to the controversy that has surrounded the CPD to a certain extent. Cuz there was legitimate concern in 2020 when Steve Scully was selected to moderate what would have been the second presidential debate. This is what CNN said about it. The Trump campaign attacked Scully for working for Biden roughly four decades earlier, leading the journalist to accidentally publicly reach out on Twitter to Anthony Scaramucci. When the outreach frustrated Republicans, Scully said that he had been hacked, something he later admitted was not true. <laughs> the commission eventually canceled the second debate after Trump declined to attend a virtual debate despite current concerns over his COVID-19 diagnosis. You know, But we also have to remember that this wasn't the end of it. Trump also complained about the president 
presidential debates and he's been doing it for years. And the RNC's withdrawal is likely meant to appease him as my co-hosts have noted. Kind of here's a brief timeline of Trump's complaints. So in January 2016, he bailed on the GOP debate after Fox News declined his demands to remove Megyn Kelly as host. September 2016, Trump complained about moderator Lester Holt after his first debate with Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, he had various demands, you know, saying nothing could be spoke about on the emails, trying to get um, people into trouble and calling them out and calling Holt's unfair. December 2019, Trump aired grievances with the CPD. This is what the AP had to say on it. Trump complained without evidence that the Commission on Presidential Debates is stacked with Trump haters and never Trumpers and threatened to bypass them. As president, the debates are up. To me, and there are many options, including doing them directly and avoiding the nasty politics of this very biased commission. Trump wrote, adding that he would make a decision at an appropriate time. And then, of course, in September 2020, after the first presidential debate that year, Trump went after moderator Chris. Walsh, Wallace, excuse me, um, just going after him, sending all sorts of tweets online that are anti Wallace posts. Sharing photos that portrayed Trump in a two in one battle against Biden and the moderator, and so on. It just seems year after year, it's been antics from Trump when it comes to debating. Do you guys have any doubt that the reason that the RNC pulled out was so that Trump does not have to talk live on a fair, fair footing? It's 100% what it is. And I just look forward to the day when Trump is finally out of politics, maybe. Four years from now, six years from now, and they have to walk back all of the damage they've done by blowing up all the institutions that have made even the appearance of discourse possible in this country. They have to say, well, okay, now you know what? Actually, maybe the CPD was fine. It's laughable and sad at the same time. It's really messed up. And of course, we should have improved rules for these debates, but Try to do it within the system and don't just say, we'll only allow our candidates to participate in Republican only presidential debates for the general election. Look, the other guy didn't show up. Don't, we don't mention the fact we didn't invite him, but he <laughs> didn't show up. He's a coward. It's hard to believe that this is motivated by anything other than Trump's personal, you know, he made a personal request that he doesn't like doing this stuff. And if we're gonna do it, you already know what he's saying. Like these are huge rating monsters. We should get money off of it. We should get this, we should get that. You already know the kind of stupidity that he's throwing around in, you know, basically because he is the ruler of the um of the Republican Party right now. They kind of gotta do what he says. Uh, he's he's the ruler, the judge, the jury, the executioner, he's everything over there. So um it, it would stands to reason that they did this with his um approval. His statement probably was exactly the following. They need to pay me $20 million to do a debate. Okay, they pay me $20 million to do a debate and then we do it on my social network. That way no one can see it. So when I don't have anything to say, (laughs) nobody can log on. It's totally private. It's a great deal. I get $20 million. Everybody wins except everybody. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.